today we are talking about Europe. A Europe divided between the war on its borders and the development of its countries. Between trust and distrust, between hope and the rise of extremism. Today we have a special edition on perspectives. We want to present all the insights to all our viewers. The main topic now for EU member countries is how they can move forward, how they can make better use of their financial resources, and how they can have sustainable programs for their communities. And in the case of Romania and Bulgaria, how they can benefit from the free movement access, specifically access to Schengen. As for the enlargement of the European Union, we will discuss the prospects for Georgia, Serbia, and Albania. How this bureaucratic body of MEPs and commissioners is adapting to all these challenges, what it, its vision and strategy, we'll find out from France, from the Euronews newsroom in Lyon. Good evening, everyone. And we'll be speaking this evening with Marina Stoimenova, live from Sofia, Boyan Burkic from Belgrade, Nino Pazuria from Tbilisi, Franco Ergo in Tirana, and Sergio Cantone in Lyon. Thank you very much for being here with us. <laughs> Romania and Bulgaria will stay outside the Schengen Gate. After some battles against the Austrian ministers, who voted against the two countries, and the succession of independent actions initiated by each of them, using varying degrees of diplomacy, both countries had been left red-faced. A recent scenario talked about Romania's decoupling from Bulgaria, but the final answer had disappointed both countries. Austria doesn't believe that either Romania or Bulgaria is ready to join the Schengen area, and there is no telling when this will happen. We still have a lot of work to do together. If we see that there are still so many internal border checks in Europe that there should not be, but for security reasons these checks exist, and this is what we are fighting for together, I can give you a certain date today. The illegal migration is the reason invoked by Austria for not wanting Romania and Bulgaria in Schengen at the moment. Last year, more than 300,000 illegal migrants were detected at Europe's doorstep. Half of them came via the Western Balkans route. In this case, almost 145,000 people were registered, a 136% increase compared to the previous year. However, these data contradict the statements of Austrian officials, who accused Romania of enabling a large part of the illegal smuggling of migrants. It is up to the presidency and the commission to set the agenda of the council, and we are still a long way from that moment when we'll be able to argue that the system is working. I want it to be very clear that the balance between rights and obligations is essential, and it is not normal that we Romanians only take on obligations without benefiting from the rights due to us. The visit of the Austrian interior minister to Romania did not give us hope for joining the Schengen area anytime soon. The Chancellor of Austria had the same attitude when he visited the Bulgarian-Turkish border. During the visit, the Austrian Chancellor had the opportunity uh, to see the border control at the Bulgarian-Turkish border and also to, to see the technical equipment with which the Bulgarian border police is fighting illegal migrants and also smugglers of illegal migrants. However, the Austrian Chancellor said that he has responsibility to the Austrian people and he will hold the veto against the exception of Bulgaria and Romania uh, to the Schengen area uh, at least until it is proven uh, that the Bulgarian Turkish border is uh, protected better than uh, now the European mechanism allows the split of Romania from Bulgaria but that doesn't mean it is automatically a winning scenario because there are now countries supporting the package that would not vote for Romania or for Bulgaria when talking about our neighbors Bulgaria is even in a more complicated situation Besides Austria, Netherlands is against Bulgaria joining to Schengen area. 
Romania and Bulgaria have their hopes with Spain that they will join the Schengen area this year. Spain takes over the presidency of the Council of the European Union on July 1st. Hi, Marina. It looks like uh, we are doing an independent battle for Schengen. How are Sofia and the authorities there playing this? And what would the main benefit be for Bulgaria to enter Schengen? Yes, it's an independent and very hard battle, especially for us, because Bulgaria is in political crisis for like two years. All that time, we literally don't have a regular government. The country practically is run by the president through five caretaker governments so far, but both he and these caretaker governments have very limited powers, and apart from representative functions, there is very little they could do. The case of Bulgaria being blocked yet again from Schengen uh, was also used in the last election campaign here. The opponents blamed each other for the failure, when in fact we have to admit that the political the political game for Schengen is much more serious and goes well beyond the borders uh, of both Bulgaria and Romania. Our country has long met the technical criteria for entering Schengen, but the clash of political interests between member states is huge. Uh, I will not name all the doubts I've heard in the country and all the reasons why the Netherlands and Austria, for example, have actually, actually blocked us. And whether, for example, the failure to tackle corruption and uh, the rule of law, of law is the real reason. However, I have to be honest that the situation with the migrants in Bulgaria in the recent months doesn't, doesn't look great. The daily news of migrants injured and dying in, in trucks is a really bad sign. However, until we have a stable government, the solution to all the problems seems complicated. And at the moment, Bulgarian politicians are too focused on their own internal dramas. And although much is said, little is done. What does it mean for Bulgaria to be part of the Schengen area uh, if we abstract from uh, the obvious and uh, the first thing that comes to, my, to our minds, uh, freedom of movement, we are undoubtedly talking about a great many positives for the economy, for example. Why not um, easier access to health care in other countries and many, many, many other things, actually. There are countless benefits, but no less important for our country will be winning the political battle and stopping and stop being the outsiders of the, of the European Union. Yes, thank you very much and uh, well put, Marina. Thank you. For us, for instance, entering Schengen would mean less pollution. For you also, I've seen a KPMG study which says that 40,000 tons of carbon dioxide are at the borders of Greece with Bulgaria, Bulgaria and Romania, and Romania and with Hungary. And of course, for us, it would be a 10 million euro loss each year staying outside Schengen. Hopefully, hopefully everything will come together in politics. Thank you, Marina. The influx of cheap Ukrainian grains that have invaded European Union markets since the beginning of the war have brought to their knees the farmers in Poland, Romania, Bulgaria, Hungary and Slovakia. To help them, the European Commission has increased twice the crisis reserve, just over 156 million euros. Having been under the pressure of Ukrainian grain flows since March of 2022, European farmers have reached the end of their patience and shouted their grievances in the streets. Within a year, grain prices on the domestic markets have fallen significantly, and the transport cost was also five times higher. With their barns full of grains, many farmers have reached the brink of bankruptcy. A venit acest război, au venit, uh... 
This war has come. These facilities offered to the neighboring country have come, which in itself would not be bad if it did not actually hit the Romanian farmers. Caught between the EU's agreement on the transit of Ukrainian grains and the desperation of their own farmers, Poland, Hungary, Slovakia and Bulgaria decided one by one to temporarily stop the grain imports from Ukraine. We have a production that is worth billions and which, if we do not take additional measures, will be difficult to market. We're going to have very big losses. Romania played the card of patience and waited for the decision of the European Commission, which came at the beginning of May. The officials in Brussels have decided to limit imports of wheat, maize, rapeseed and sunflower seeds from Ukraine to the five countries by June 5th. For farmers, it provided new financial aid. Noi suntem pregătiți să ajungă la timp banii pentru, pentru fermieri. We are ready to get the money for the farmers in time to fit into the optimal stage and to sow the last piece of land that must be worked in Romania, because we know that this is where the production comes from. We all feed ourselves from the fruit of the earth. So far, the European Commission has sent just over 156 million euros to farmers. Only Poland, Bulgaria and Romania benefited from the money from the first package. The latest aid, announced early May, of 100 million euro was shared with all five countries affected by Ukrainian grain imports. Hello, Sergio. Hello. We have just mentioned two great challenges from EU. How is it seen from Lyon and from Brussels? Actually, the two topics are part of the same problem, the complexity of the EU policy and decision-making process. You have mentioned two cases in your question, the farming products import crisis and the Schengen stalemate when it comes to Bulgaria and Romania. Yet, I would add a third one, the completion of the enlargement process that started in the 90s. The EU as a bloc, has went through a set of major crises, financial and economic, migration, the Brexit, the Covid and the Ukrainian war. It has generated among the EU citizens a huge pessimistic sentiment about the political future of a European construction. Many governments feel obliged to please the pessimism and the skepticism of their own citizens for short-term electoral strategies. They cannot, for instance, successfully contain the number of immigrants from other continents, and they use blank political weapons, such as blocking the access to Schengen for Romania and Bulgaria, and, on a bigger scale, slowing down the enlargement process with the other countries on the waiting list. The farming issue and the war in Ukraine is also showing the difficulties for the countries of the EU to assume the responsibilities of a political action. Sanctions against Russia and help in Ukraine have a price with huge unpopular fallouts. It's difficult for Brussels to react because it must combine the often conflicting interests of all the member states. It takes time, but it's the price of living and growing together. Thank you, Sergio. Nino Paturia is live in Tbilisi. Good evening. Please tell me about the situation in your country. Uh, good evening. Uh, uh, Georgia has a historical opportunity to get a status of the EU membership candidacy country uh, by end of this year if it implements all the 12 recommendations given by the EU leaders last summer in the wake of Russian invasion to Ukraine. The associated trio countries, including the Ukraine, Georgia and Moldova, applied to the EU membership candidacy status and in June of 2022, uh, Brussels decided to grant Ukraine and Moldova the sought-after status, while for Georgia, the EU leaders decided uh, to uh, recognize its European perspective, uh, while uh, the EU leaders also put out 12 
recommendations to Georgia is precondition uh, to granting the desired status. Georgia has been historically uh, aspiring toward EU partnership in the European family as, as this country identifies itself European. Uh, in 2014, Georgia and the uh, European Union signed association agreement uh, after the EU-Georgia relationship accelerated its pace in the wake of the short-lived war with Russia in 2008. A few days later, after Brussels recognized the European perspective for Georgia, uh, thousands and uh, estimated 60,000 demonstrators uh, took to the streets of the, the Georgia's capital, Tbilisi, to voice their disappointment and demand the EU membership. However, this popular display never convinced the EU leaders who insisted that Georgia should implement all necessary reforms. The Commission is expected to report back to a European Council about the steps taken by Georgia's government by the end of the year, and based on this report, the EU leaders should decide whether or not they want to grant the candidacy status to Georgia. Pro-European demonstrations has become an usual occurrence in the capital of Georgia, Tbilisi. The latest of the rallies were held earlier this spring, when mass protests forced Georgian government to recall controversial foreign agent law. Many people in Georgia believe that by joining the European Union, the country can become more prosperous, secure and democratic. Protests united citizens from all age groups, but young people and student movements were especially active. Europe means better education, strong economy, freedom of speech and media, freedom of judiciary, etc. Every one of us wants to live in a developed and civilized country. European integration is a topic which is always on top of the agenda in the country. This topic is gathering even more attention now, as Georgia is working to implement 12 recommendations given by the European Commission in order to grant country EU member state candidate status. It is exactly this country which needs those 12 recommendations. All the points are needed to continue the development of our state. Building an European state and democracy is not an easy task. There are many opposing forces. In Georgia, people are active and if the country wears off the course, they demand the correction. And this is very important. Countries' European aspirations are well reflected in numerous polls conducted over the years. Recently released public opinion poll commissioned by the International Republican Institute shows that 89% of respondents support Georgia joining the European Union, a number which is all-time high. Despite political challenges, many Georgians strongly believe that the future of the country belongs to the European family. I'm uh, asking uh, Franco Ergo, how is the EU uh, looking to Albania and Albania to EU? And what do Albania think about the access? Uh, Albanians uh, have always been in favor of EU membership. I would like to remind you that uh, the protest that toppled the communist system in the early 90s had as its slogan, only one expression, we want Albania as the rest of Europe. All the Albanian political forces from that moment onwards, from the, uh, f uh, from the moment that uh, democracy started to exist in Albania, have always supported this element. Uh, all the citizens of Albania, all the political parties in Albania have always been in favor of a full membership into the European Union. There is not a single voice let alone any party uh, that uh, is against this objective. It was only a few days ago uh, that uh, the Prime Minister of the Republic of Albania, in a speech that he held in Greece, underlined precisely this fact. The Albanians' uh, place in the Euro is in the European Union, and no one, no one has ever, ever doubted this element. Albania so far has been a member of the Council of Europe, 
Europe, has been a, a very active member of the NATO and uh, has uh, started the negotiations uh, in order to become a full member of the European Union. This happened last uh, October together with uh, the Republic of North uh, Macedonia. The latest uh, audience uh, research organized in Albania found out that over 90% of the citizens of Albania uh, think that our place is in the European Union and they are putting pressure on the political parties in order to deliver. So the message underlined from Tirana is that our place is in Europe but we are relatively late in joining the European Union. I would like to underline one uh, more, one final element. Uh, all the Albanians who live out of the Republic of Albania in the Republic of Kosovo or in the North Republic of Macedonia or in uh, the Republic of Montenegro have always been a constructive factor uh, in as far as the attempts of all these countries in uh, their mission to join the European Union. It is because of history, it is because of tradition, it is because of culture that the place of the Albanians is in the European Union. After emerging from the communist regime, Albania initiated its path towards the European Union. Today, 31 years after the first pluralist elections, Albania is in the last phase before it becomes a full member of the EU. Starting from July 19th alongside North Macedonia, after a long series of delays and dragging in the process, Albania started negotiating its EU membership, a process that won't be neither easy nor short. All surveys conducted at different times by the international institutions or local organizations show that over 90% of Albanian citizens are pro the European Union integration. I think we will become a member state by 2013. I can see the process continuing. Politicians know. They make the mess and they amend it. Maybe in two or three years. If the process continues, I don't think it will last long. I don't need to go to Bray. We don't need the EU. We are good. The EU needs us. We have everything. This is a miracle of God. Everything is well. After overcoming the political deadlock and the situation caused by the COVID pandemic, Albania hopes to quickly go through negotiation chapters with the EU. In the Serbian town of Kladova, the newly renovated Fetislam fortress has been officially inaugurated. The fortress was renovated with the assistance of the European Union and Germany. They invested 1.3 million in this project. The Euronews Serbia team visited Kladova the day of the inauguration. Renewed Fetislam Fortress next year will mark 500 years since it was built. Small Kladovo town was built in 1524 by the order of Sultan Suleiman the Great. The fort was destroyed and conquered many times by the Ottomans and Austro-Hungarians and in 1867 finally it was conquered by the Serbs. Now it was fully renovated with the help of European Union. Apart from the stunning architecture, Fetislam is a pleasant place for relaxation and fun. Inside the walls there is a park, an overview to Danube and Turn Severin fulfills the experience of Kladovo Fort. The opening gate to the fortress was reconstructed, as well as summer stage, fort walls and the riverbank tower. Reconstruction lasted three years. That is lovely, thank you very much, but now you can give us some more money. We have decided to make a 6 million euro budget for bike path from Ram Fortress to Veliko Gradište. In Novi Sad, bike path Bela Crkva Kovin. And if you would give some money, so that all Germans can then see what the Danube look like. After all, the Serbian part of Danube is the most beautiful. Anke, I'm serious. Chief of the EU delegation in Serbia, Emanuele Giofre, said that Fetislam is Serbian cultural heritage as well as European, and that he is happy that Serbia and European Union reconstructed the fort. Investing in cultural and historic monuments, we are helping tourism of the region. Tourism here has a great potential and that was recognized by tourists, so more than 65% of tourists come here near Danube. 
That is why EU and Germany have invested 24.3 million euros in the project known as EU for Cultural Heritage and Tourism. Reconstruction of Fetislan was just one step in the long Serbia-EU cooperation which started with renewal of Golubac fortress. Serbian authorities are announcing a fast road from Belgrade to Golubac which will connect this region to the rest of the country. Boyan, hello, good evening. Thank you very much for being here. Tell me about this balance between the influence of EU and the influence of Russia. Well, uh, despite the, the fact, uh, which is not a secret, that a lot of Serbs uh, feel sympathy for Russia and some of them even feel sympathy for its war effort in Ukraine, Serbs know very well that uh, uh, Serbia is already part of the European economic system. 200,000 uh, families earn their living by working uh, for European companies. Even more, a greater number work in companies that trade with the European Union. 70% of uh, trade, uh, uh, foreign trade of Serbia is with the European Union. And uh, uh, more than $30 billion is just our exports to the European Union. 80% of our imports is from the European Union. Serbs are also aware of all the uh, financial support that the European Union is, is extending to the country, the projects like the one you saw in our uh, report. So uh, basically, uh, Serbia has been uh, the candidate country since 2012. It's been waiting for 11 years, which is the longest period of waiting after Turkey. And during this, this entire time, the support uh, for the membership of the European Union always stood above 50 percent. Uh, which is higher than most of the Eastern European countries had before their accession. But in recent years, and notably uh, since the visit of uh, the French President Emmanuel Macron, who came to Belgrade and t told Serbia that the accession uh, process in Europe was on hold until such time when Europe resolves its internal differences, um, the approval rating started to uh, fall down and now it's for the first time it stands below 50 percent 60 uh, 46 percent of people say they would vote for membership and 32 percent say they would vote against but uh, to these statistics, we should add the results of this, this same survey done by the Ministry for European Integration, uh, where 63% uh, of Serbs say that uh, reforms needed for the EU accession should in any case be continued. And when you ask them, uh, those who would vote against, why would they vote against, they say that A, we are not ready and B, they don't want us. So it's not that the Serbs no longer want to be members of the European Union. They're just aware that this goal uh, may be on a long hold, either due to our sluggish reform or due to the uh, enlargement fatigue, as they call it, in the European Union. Thank you very much, Boyan. It remains to be seen how our capitals and Brussels will work together and develop strategies for each other's citizens. We are in this story together, and the progress of each of us means progress for all of us. After all, these are the values of the European Union, aren't they? This is Andra Mirondiakonescu from the set in Bucharest, and you are watching Euronews.